So, Mr. Jones, the results from the ultrasound have come back, and it seems like Elliot has a condition known as a ventricular septal defect. Is that bad? What does that even mean? A ventricular septal defect, also known as a VSD, is basically a hole in Elliot's heart. To understand this condition, we first need to understand what the normal anatomy of the heart is. The heart has four chambers, called the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. These chambers can be thought of rooms that hold blood. Separating the left and right side of the heart are structures called septums, which can be thought of the walls that separate these rooms. The ventricular septum separates the left and right ventricles, while the atrial septum separates the left and right atria. Deoxygenated blood, meaning blood that is not currently carrying oxygen, first enters the right atrium of the heart. The blood is then pumped into the right ventricle and then out of the heart through the pulmonary artery to the lungs to become oxygenated. Oxygenated blood returns to the left atrium of the heart. This blood is then pumped into the left ventricle and finally out of the heart through the aorta to be circulated around the body. Okay, that makes sense, but what exactly do you mean by hole in the heart? A hole in the heart is a congenital defect, meaning it's a condition that's present at birth. A VSD is a specific type of hole in the heart that occurs when the ventricular septum does not form properly. As a result, the oxygenated blood from the left ventricle flows into the right ventricle. This causes oxygenated blood to mix with deoxygenated blood and flow into the lungs, which puts strain on the pulmonary blood vessels. With this condition, Elliot could be exhibiting the following signs and symptoms. Shortness of breath, fast or hard breathing, paleness, fast heart rate, easy tiring, poor eating or difficulty gaining weight, a heart murmur, or frequent respiratory infections. So how did this happen? The exact mechanism that causes VSD is unknown. Mutations in genes responsible for the regulation of heart development, specifically ventricular separation, may cause this condition. Additionally, environmental factors such as teratogens, which are factors that cause abnormal development of embryos, as well as maternal illnesses such as gestational diabetes, have been shown to be associated with VSD. Okay, so what should I anticipate from here? The severity and prognosis of infants with VSDs differs based on the size. A smaller hole may not cause many symptoms. However, a larger hole will cause more symptoms and may require more intense treatments. After birth, upwards of 80% of VSDs will spontaneously close. Furthermore, small VSDs usually do not require surgical closure. If surgery is required, the VSD repair is associated with a mortality rate of 1%. That's good to hear. So how can you treat Elliot? Many smaller VSDs do not require any medical management or intervention. However, medium to large VSDs usually require surgery to close them. While awaiting closure, Typical medical treatments include low doses of diuretics in order to relieve the additional burden on the heart and the mixing of blood through the defect. This is often used alongside ACE inhibitors, which decrease the blood pressure in the heart and minimize blood mixing. VSD surgeries are the most common procedure in pediatric cardiac surgery and are considered to be very safe procedures. There are two main types of surgeries that are performed. The first involves closing the defect through an open heart surgery. The second is a transcatheter closure, which involves inserting a catheter into an artery and then using the catheter to perform the closure. This procedure is less invasive and is useful if the defect is difficult to reach. What should I expect after the surgery? Elliot will likely stay in the intensive care unit for less than a week. VSD surgeries have relatively low post-operative complication rates. Less than 16% of patients experience any complications, such as infection, and less than 3% experience any major adverse effects after the surgery. So how will this affect Elliot as he gets older? VSDs and VSD surgeries have excellent survival rates. Patients with both small defects that don't involve treatment and larger defects that do involve surgery typically do not face major restrictions in terms of physical activity. However, in both of these circumstances, it's important that regular checkups be conducted by a physician in order to address any complications that may develop. Overall, with the appropriate care, Elliot has a very good chance of living a healthy life. Thank you, doctor. That makes me feel a lot better.